I'm going to start today by telling you a story as to why like this starts. But I, I, I'm a teacher, I'm a career teacher 20 years. Uh, this is the video game club of two different high schools are actually here. Um, we have an alumni that works for MAGFest, so they gave us great group rates and we brought them down and everything. So they're experiencing it for themselves. A lot of them are, fir how many first times? It's your first time here. One, two, three, I think this whole squad's first time. You guys first time? Um, and so Video Game Clubs of America came out of a, uh, came out of kind of a, a, a dare. You can come on in, man. Come on. Uh, Video Game Clubs of America started as kind of a dare. Um, my, my media specialist at the Career Magnet School, which is a librarian, fancy name for librarian, the media specialist, Chris Barnaby, hashtag Chris Barnaby, is, uh, he was talking trash about how, like, dude, your stuff is so good. Come on in. It's good times. I got a show. You're gonna enjoy it. Um, and so, listen, anybody who walks by is getting heckled, okay? Um, and so what happened is Chris basically said last summer, I had applied for a TED talk, right? TEDx Lancaster. And I basically said, hey, uh, I got this thing going, it's in year five, I applied for TEDx. Okay, cool. Chris, out of left field, Mike was there, goes, you guys should really brand this and go global. And I was like, ah, it's, Wait, that's kind of a good idea. Like, that's wow. Like, that's, you know, maybe. And so then we started pushing for a second. We started pushing, like, spreading. Um, the happiest virus you could catch is what we are. The, and we went into our sister high school, which is Chambers Regary Senior High School, which is represent, right? You guys want to say how? There it is, right? Um, and so we got past our Board of Education. Uh, you're going to see on the website that we built today, I, we have collected. A, an entire setup of bylaws, state standards in education, everything you could need for any board of education in the country to go, look, here it is. Here's what I should be working on. The National Department of Labor says I should be doing X. And this is what I want to do through video games. Because my argument is, and this is what the TED Talk thing is, is and you'll see pictures. It's a, it's a giant picture show today. And then they're going to talk to you and have questions. And just them, their experiences. We might get out of here early. Come on in, you know you want to. Come on in, you know you want to. All right, pressure, it's good. So as we get going, what's gonna happen today is you're gonna learn, is it too loud or should I just, is that good? Okay. Um, today, this is what's gonna happen. So by the end of today, I'm gonna do the first part, right? Our story, origins, about 20 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm gonna fly, I'm not giving you the whole TED talk, but I'm just gonna kinda go. Hi there. Um, and then secondly, what's going to happen is you're going to hear these guys talk, right? Here's how it has helped me, right? Story. I don't even know what they're going to say, honestly. I, I just told them yesterday, a bunch of them, hey, do you mind telling your, like, what did it do for you? What's your favorite moment? Okay. And then finally, uh, I'm going to show you the website, how to start a club on your own, uh, what we're offering you. And then lastly, we're asking that you go off and share it with somebody else. That's literally all we're asking for. And then put the sticker somewhere. That's the most important part. All right, so my TED Talk started with three questions. So the first one is I got a huge crowd today. Shout out huge crowd, hashtag huge crowd. So how many of you guys, and you guys are a part of this as well, how many of you guys can actually remember the name of the person that picked on you in high school, right? Can you name them? I mean, you guys are still in high school, so I can imagine you could, right? If you could punch them in the face, would you? Like, do you have resentment still, right? Now, imagine this next one. How many of you would actually say that school, and by middle school or high school, pick one, is actually fun? Like, I want to be there. Well, that's what this thing is going to kind of address. You know, imagine, imagine your school now in, in a world where there's a club. Welcome. I have Starburst. It's true. Come on in. Um, <laughs> it's true. There's a, there's a reason for this. And, and administrators cannot deny the success we've had. And so we are living proof of what's going down. So this is what you're going to do today, okay? <clears throat> so first of all, my name is Josh Bound. I'm a teacher at the Career Magnet School in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. This is me doing the TED Talk in Lancaster. TEDx is a regional thing. Uh, it made, it, it was just put online uh, last couple weeks ago. Officially, TED approved it. It's now in the world. So if you get there and you <clears throat> get on that site, please like me. I don't think I get paid, but it looks good for my ego. So I would love that. <laughs> um, 
So this is me, I get invited to do this, I get chosen, I go through the TED process, I get chosen, and their, Ted's thing is, it's an idea worth spreading. That's all it is. What's your idea worth spreading? So I go, well, my idea worth spreading starts with, this is the story of starting a video game club and, and, a, and a, my attempt to connect with my son, right? Because it's super personal and I'll probably tear up in about two minutes. Just know I'm gonna speed this part up. But it is my belief, and this is how it starts, it's my belief that video games are the, and board games are the perfect tool for making the socially awkward socially active. That's, my, that's what it is. So it's, if you take a video game or a board game and just push play, and these guys will attest to this later, it changes the room dynamic, okay? And kids that are usually quiet in the corner will come in to the, the light. And, that's, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, so I don't have to get into this too much, but I want to show you a quick picture of my son here. This is me. <laughs> These are actually the pictures I used of my, welcome, welcome, hi, you made it, I'm glad, good morning. We have Starburst and stickers, you've been promised, okay? Um, this is my, the beginning of my, if you watch the whole TED talk, you'll, see, you'll hear this story in super detail, and I'll start tearing up and whatnot. But this is me, super jock dad. Just know that, like I'm a, I mean look at me for God's sakes, right? I do not play video games, I'm not that kid. I like video games because I played them when my mom was divorced and working. Like she had to work nights, so I had nobody to go and, ex and you can relate a lot of you. So I got into Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers and those are the games I grew up on, right? Like original Nintendo. And then I went to, I found sports. I found sports and my coaches became kind of my dad figures. Does that make sense? So I found camaraderie, I found all this stuff. So when I grew up, I was like, dude, my kid, oh man, I was a national all-star lacrosse, right? My kid's gonna be lacrosse, this is me coaching lacrosse, him at a lacrosse practice, he's gonna be the greatest jock ever. Yeah, no, no. Uh, he's one here, I find out in year three, he's on the autism spectrum. He hates sports and anything to do with sports can't stand it. So this is where my story starts. He'll tell you, I was watching ESPN once and he goes, dad, do we really have to watch this? I was like, it's freaking golf. Like that's the, the <laughs> friendliest one possible. I just don't get, so we'll sit and watch two things he watches. Tour de France, he'll watch a Tour de France with me every year, because it's what we do in the summertime when you teach, you have nothing to do on the couch, right? Tour de France and we'll watch League of Legends on Twitch. Those are the sports he watches, okay? Um, so the whole thing is, how do I connect with this kid? And, and here he is, he gets into trains. You know, I love my kids more than anybody, and I have a daughter that came along after him, but she's part of the story. He's the reason for this. And I'm telling you this, because what happened was, I was at Walmart one day, and um, I was looking for a way to connect with my son. See, I had been laying in a garage, underneath uh, a 1968 convertible Beetle, a Volkswagen Beetle, that I had restored for my mom, right? Like I'm wrenching on this thing, I'm a grease monkey, wrenching away, and there's a screwdriver like literally, you ever have that tool that's just like right out of your reach and you're in this confined space and you gotta, your hand's too big to get in the back of the PC type of thing? Same idea, so I was like, look, can you, my son comes running in the garage, I go, hey, can you give me that screwdriver? As he's walking out, he stops, he looks at me like upside down style, like, you know, that. And I go, can you give me that? He goes, but my hands will get dirty, dad. And then he wipes his hands off and takes off. See, he's a sensory processing disorder kid. You're welcome to come in, it's okay, it's not too late. He's got sensory issues. That's what his thing is. Doesn't like soap, can't stand greasy. Ugh, ah. That's why he doesn't like playing tackle football or anything where there's rough involved. I didn't get that. But underneath the car, I break down in tears. I'm literally bawling my eyes out because I'm like, this kid's seven years old and I, I'm not connecting with him. I'm failing. This is, I'm a, I come from a single family, single mom. So my whole goal in life was to be the best dad ever. Like that's my goal. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to do that. And here my kid is, and he's got this label and I didn't get it and I was in denial. So I had to change, so I go to Walmart, it's like a day later, I'm actively looking, and if you know me, I'm like super aggressive. When I get into something, I am like all in, and they'll tell you that later. Absolutely. I, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm completely into it, like this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna win, because there's the jock. 
I'm going to win. This, this thing is not going to defeat me. I don't let my son use that word in our house. The A-bomb we call it. Oh, you dropped the A-bomb. No, no, no. That's not a crutch in my world. We don't, I don't let him celebrate it. I don't. No, you're you. That's who you are. Forget the label. You're you. Right? So I'm hoping dads on YouTube hear this because there is a light. And video games might be it. So we're at Walmart and he picks up a controller. He's playing Mario Kart. And some random kid he's never met before. Come on in, it's not too late. I would enjoy it if you came in. Some random guy comes, we have Starburst. No, not happening. Some random guy comes walking in. This kid comes walking in, grabs a second controller. Do you know how they have like those things set up? And all of a sudden they start talking to each other. Well, autism is three things. There's the empathy part. I don't care about you. That can get you on the spectrum. There's the uh, stimming part this type of activity, you know, whatever. Uh, and then there's the social awareness part. Like there's, you know, there's issue. So my son wasn't communicating properly for the social. And long story short is Mario Kart, he started playing games and talking. Like, oh yeah, da 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 da. And I'm like, oh God, there's the answer. That's the answer. Like, I need more of that. So I go home and I tell my wife, hey, I want to buy a Nintendo Wii. This is when the Wii was like just hot, remember? So you can time date yourself, right? I go, I want to buy a Wii. My wife goes, no, no, we're, no, no. And please don't, by the way, please, Josh, don't buy it until at least sixth grade. Like, don't. And can you get the vibe already that I listened? Like, I, I don't, I'm like, well, all right, I respect that. So I went outside to my garage and I'm like, all right, how am I going to make this happen? And then it dawned on me, I'd been married to her for like 12 years at that point. I'm like, she's not leaving. I got this great big house. <laughs> like, she's not leaving. So <laughs> I, go to buy, I go to buy the Wii, and uh, I come home, and like any good husband, you hook it up to the television, give your kids the keys so that she can't take it away. Like, I cut her off at the knees. I admit that, Heidi. I admit that, my wife Heidi, if you're watching. Completely admit it. So I said, sure, here's my boy with Mario Kart. This is day one. I couldn't believe how hardcore he was doing it. You can see he's bouncing. Left, he's chilling, learning how to push A and B at the same time, right? And then he bounces in place. That's how he gets rid of the energy. Real simple stuff. But that's my boy. That's him. These guys have known my son his whole life, like the crew magnet kids. He's grown up at our school in this club. Because here's the thing. I realized that if I could, which is the next part, well, let me slow down. I realized that the video games were my link to my son. So I started playing with him. Well, a couple days later, I'm sitting in class, actually mentor period, and I'm with these three guys. These are their senior pictures. They were sophomores when it started. Camden over here is Aiden's little brother, right? So it's, a, it's literally me at a table, my, like typing away on my MacBook. Aiden, Zion, and Sarav are sitting there talking trash about PlayStation or Xbox, who's better, blah. This was a time where you didn't have to pay to be on PlayStation Network, so like the PlayStation camp was all about like, I don't pay for my friends, you pay for yours, you know that thing? And then, you know, Blu-ray and Xbox didn't have Xbox One yet, so there's a lot of trash talk, the whole bit. And then I know where I look up and I was like, listen, shut your mouth, PlayStation's the answer. And they were shocked. <laughs> they were like, this guy knows? Like, you PlayStation? Like, I had to let him in on it. And Sure enough, Z I think it was Zion goes, you know, it'd be really good if we had a video game club here, just out of left field. And I was like, yeah, that would be good because where did I flash to? I flashed right to my kid. And I was like, that would be amazing. Because at this point he was in like, I wanna say fourth or fifth grade. So I'm like, if I could build this thing up into like a safe spot for like, for kids like him, like a safe zone, and where he comes in and he has friends, automatically, that eliminates 900% of my problem as a high school dad, right? Because he's got friends, he's not alone, he's not getting bullied, he's normal, you know what I mean? So that's where it starts with these three. So we go and approach, by the end of that day, I had recruited Mike here. Mike is like, sure, I'm in. And we had like six members by the end of the first day. We built an iTunes U course, we're in Apple school, so we did iTunes U. That's what it is, don't knock on it, I get it. A gaming convention PC, I get it. It's, it's okay. Apple is here. It's okay. So I'm like, let's do this. So by the next day, word was getting out with the rest of the crew, and like we had like 75 or 80 people were like, dude, I want to get in that. Well, it wasn't official. So I went to our principal, Dr. Long, and I was like, look, you gotta, can I get a yes or no vote on this? Because you're the principal of the building. 
And he, he literally said to me, Josh, would it be good for kids? I go, yes, here are the kids. One, I can teach them social skills that they're not getting. Two, it's a safe zone for kids to find each other and make friendships. And boyfriend, girlfriend, dare I say. These are kids that don't talk to anybody and all of a sudden they're like, I mean, honestly, how many relationships have kicked out? I mean, there's some serious relationships, friends, actual relationships, all because you play video games and you're put in a room. Now, it's not to say I'm encouraging that, but it happens by default. And that's what I'm getting at. So we go and we see Dr. Long and we come back the following fall. Dr. Long actually said to us, he goes, listen, I like the idea, um, what do you need from me? And one of these guys yells out, um, hey, a PlayStation 4 would be nice. Just like complete smart ass, like straight up and down. Like, yo, you're asking, PlayStation, and this is like when it was like $600 brand new. And he's like, well, what's that run? I was like, I don't know, GameStop? Mm -hmm. And so he goes, well, go, go price check that and then talk to the student government. So they bought us a PlayStation 4. Like we own a PlayStation 4, Career Magnet School owns, and I'm like, this is crazy pants. Like this isn't supposed to happen. Now understand what's going on here. I realize in hindsight that this is how education is 20 years in. The top 10% of your population are the jocks and the brains. And we love them, they're amazing. They're so good. Oh God, these, we need to all be like them. Look at them, they bench press, they run fast, they hit hard, they, everything illegal is not illegal because they're doing it. They're so cool, right? Then you get the bottom 10% who are just the complete pains that you can't have in the building because they're the ones you worry about. And then there's 80% in the middle. And that's where the video game club hits. It doesn't hit the 10%. It doesn't actively go at the 10%. It doesn't actively go at the bottom 10%. It goes at the 80. And here's the kicker. Every school in the country has standardized testing. Every school. So if you can give a kid a reason to be at your school and enjoy being there, they're probably going to perform better on tests. There's a lot of logic in this. Does that make sense? So that's what I sold to them, and sure enough, it actually happens. We actually have the highest GPA in our school, like by club, our club does. And it's just because, I don't even know why, they just like being together, you know? I don't really do anything in the clubs anymore. It's built up. I mean, a, a lot of us just like pitch ideas to Bound and we like end up setting up tournaments or um, like we had a wee bowling tournament just. Oh, yo, you're ruining my flow, man. You're ruining the flow. Just hold I'm on. Just, I'm, I'm yeah, just so saying that. He loves, yeah, keep me on time. That's your job. Keep me on time right now. I okay, am, all right, good. Oh, he's got, are you really clocking me? I, I'm watching. He's all right. Yeah. I see. I love, I love the kid, all right? And every one of them has got a different strength. That's what happens. So uh, we come back to the following fall and we end up realizing, well, what's the best way to stay a club? Well, that's to make yourself legitimate, right? So we're like, well, what are we going to do? So we come in, extralife.org is downstairs. Someone comes across extralife.org and goes, do we should raise money for cancer? Okay, well, well, how do we do that? 24-hour video game marathon. Come on in, it's okay, it's not too late, I got Starburst. Never mind, okay. <laughs> um, so what happens is, as we're preparing, one of our students, Chris Sellers, passed away of leukemia. He started his senior year, he came in, he was in carpentry shop on the Votech side of our building, and uh, Chris literally came to school for weeks one and two week three of his senior year was like I don't feel so well week four he's at Hershey Medical with every pipe and thing you could imagine coming out of a kid just depressing so by the time we got to running our very first 24-hour video game marathon for extralife.org Chris had already passed away right so as sad as it is well we had raised fifteen hundred dollars in straight cash just because our kids wanted to play video games overnight. Like they were like, that's the coolest thing ever. Like we could, oh, I got to stay at a school and just screw around. So what happened was Mrs. Seller showed up one day and I gave her the $1,500. I literally walked to stat like, here you go, ma'am, for you, from us. And she looked at me and she was like tearing up. I'm tearing up thinking about it. Like tearing up, our, the kicker is our kids didn't want any praise. Like none of them wanted like glory from that moment. We didn't advertise it. The, like the, the fact that I'm bringing it up here is like the first time I'm actually talking about it. We didn't, we are not glory hounds. We just do what's right. And that's when we realized that like the video game club can make itself legitimate by, by contributing to society. Take these kids in number, get them involved. And I have a lot of examples of this in things in society through gaming, the tool of gaming, right? So Chris passes away. 
Unfortunate as it is, it leads our leadership, this is Zion and those guys still, to doing more. So the next year, we put Nintendo Wii consoles in a hospital. All the pediatrics room at our hospital get Nintendo Wii consoles, DVDs, video games. Like we jailbreak every Wii. We learn how to jailbreak the Wiis so they can play DVDs. I don't know if you know that. Wiis don't play DVDs. I didn't know that until we ran into that. Um, so we do this. And obviously now you're talking about like, dude, look, I, I dare anybody to tell us we're not legitimate after this thing went live. Do you know what I mean? Like every board of ed official was like, well, you guys are doing a lot of good stuff. Well, well yeah, we've been doing it for years, but we didn't, we're not glory hounds in a world of glory hounds. I mean, you look around, right? So that leads us to the next one. And you'll see some of these kids up here. Just look at little Jeremy here. Oh, little Jeremy, little Nihilus, Sam's in this one. This is us at the autism walk. Uh, come on in, it's not too late. The Autism Walk of Franklin County, or excuse me, Chambers Area School District to Autism Walk. And again, I'm not a guy that celebrates my son on a spectrum, so he's not gonna be there participating, but this is for the parents who need that. So we're like, all right, what can we do? We volunteer our times, and then Sam, where's Sam? Sam's at, where does, uh, there's Sam. Hey. Sam is a Minecraft junkie. Can you stand up for a second, Sam? Get on YouTube. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> Sam is a Minecraft junkie. The kid's a wizard. And so what happens is we go, hey, we'll host a Minecraft room for you. Just any kid that's like not into bounce houses, send them to us. So we open up all the computers, we get them all on there the whole bit and they're playing Minecraft. I think we had so many of the one year that it shut it down, it like overloaded the system. And we learned we had to deal with that. So then the next year, which is last year, we did, we project onto the walls, Nintendo Wii U now, like video games on the walls all throughout, and then we do that as well. So we have Minecraft, and we also have gaming on walls now inside the building at Cassius, which is their home turf. So you guys are gonna be invited to deal with that too this year, so you know, in case you couldn't figure that out, Cassius, all right? Um, and so, so this is what we do, okay? But it doesn't stop there, because now I'm like, hey, TED Talk time, let's build this bad boy up. And the Wi-Fi's working or no, any idea? It's no big deal, so it's not. So our website, this is all student run. This is Alex Kennedy. I wanna shout him out, I told him I would. I'm pointing at him, Alex Kennedy. He is the, the designer of this site. He's the webmaster. He put his name on like the last page because he doesn't want any credit. I'm like, you're dumb, you need credit. There's reasons, look, you're gonna build a resume. This is, be proud of this. Mary Sylvester helped me design the logo. It's simple, it's clean. I mean, now we're super legit. We got a website, we got like embroidered stuff, we got stickers, Starburst, in case you haven't heard. Um, and we start building it up, right? We start building this stuff up. So here's another example of it. So Sam here, we hook up with the rec center. This is my son, Cadman, and his best friend, Rowan. Hashtag Rowan and Cadman for life, right? This is, this is my son, and this is his best friend, and Sam, and a bunch of other, a couple other kids, there's like three or four of you, that one year, we offer out to the general public, hey look, come play Minecraft, we'll teach your kids how to build, how to, was it a parkour course? Yeah, it was, we're gonna build a parkour course, we're gonna teach you all world edit, we're gonna teach you this, we're gonna teach you that, da 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 da. Then we're also gonna talk to the parents, this is why you shouldn't dog this game. You know what I mean, we're bridging gaps. That's just one example, right? And so this is all on the website. You can find this all on the website. But what we do is, most importantly, I'm going to take you to this. We organize all the paperwork for you, you might need. All the forms and fundraising ideas, which you're going to see some fundraising ideas. Uh, all the educational resources are there. Things that are in the news, you know. It's, it's, it's crazy how fast it built up. So here's you know, me doing video. I, our school is super technology oriented, so all the kids shot video of me. We have a new one, we're begging for money, because last, like three weeks ago, we got a nonprofit number. Like, we have officially a nonprofit. And I'm sitting here going, what? Two nights ago, I was in Lidditz, Pennsylvania, talking to the Ambucks. You know Lidditz, right? Lidditz, Pennsylvania, talking to the Ambucks. And I'm like, and they're like, here, have money. And I'm like, I don't even know what to ask for. Like, I, I'm just learning as I go. And so this whole ride has is, is just been crazy. But this is, in the end, what we're going to give you. Here's the plan. We're going to give any school that wants to start a club an entire setup. We're fundraising money 
through our overnights, we do two a year. One's in the spring, which is like us screwing around initiation style things, very cult-like stuff. You might we don't hear talk. about that later. Yeah, we don't, yeah, okay. Um, and then as a result, we're gonna buy Nintendo Wii's off of Facebook at like dirt cheap, and we're gonna put together kits, and then we're gonna, we're gonna give them out. All you gotta do is fill out information, and we'll send it to you. Everything's paid for. Done. Don't have, no, no questions, we're good. As long as you're a school or whatever. But here's the kicker. This shameless transition slide, you're welcome. Um, it doesn't stop there. So after the TED talk, I wanna introduce you to Mrs. Stockslager, right? Sam here, can you stand up, Sam? Come on, Sam. This is Sam, president of, Madam President of the Cash, president, yeah, I'm assuming? Cash's video game club. We're sitting there, he's, co Mr. Jamelli's coaching football. I'm sitting there with these guys after school, like, what do you guys want to do? You got to make yourself legit. And she goes, did you hear about that teacher that has cancer? And I go, no, I didn't hear about it. She, Mrs. Stockslager got diagnosed with breast cancer on the very first day of school, right? So yeah, welcome back to school, breast cancer, like awful. And we're like, what do we do? Because one of her children goes to her, Cassius, one of, the, one of the kids goes to the career magnet school. So like her kids are in us. Our, Austin's actually one of our members, and I didn't know it. So what do you do? So one night I stop at Buffalo Wild Wings, and I go, hey, Rocco, you wanna help me out? I'm trying to do this fundraiser thing. Can I turn all these TVs into video games? And Rocco's like, you, you think the answer's hell no, right? Rocco goes, dude, that sounds pimp. <laughs> I was like, and if you meet Rocco, if you ever meet Rocco, Rocco is the man. He goes, that sounds pimp. That's a quote, direct quote. Yeah, boss, let's do that. I said, what night's the slowest night for you? Wednesday night. I go, what Wednesday? He goes, brother, any Wednesday. And I'm like, what, any Wednesday? He goes, any Wednesday you wanna come in, fine. And I'm gonna hook you up with a fundraiser too. So anything you buy, 10% goes back to whatever the hell you want, right? They're just gonna collect money for you. Oh, and then I'm gonna hook you up with a second fundraiser, so it's like all year long. So anytime, da, 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 I'm like, what? All I did was ask. So we hook this up, we do this, we do a Fortnite tournament, right? The original idea is a Fortnite tournament. We're, everyone loves Fortnite, we're gonna do Fortnite. Well, it was a, just a cashless thing. So I'm sitting at Career Magnet School and I'm like, we need to make this big. $20 per team, duos matches in playgrounds. Winning teams play the championship at Buffalo Wild Wings on the big screens, on their Wi-Fi, right? $660 later is what we raised for her, and all we did was eight wings and played video games. And the winning team got 100 bucks and V-Bucks. So like, everybody made out because of a video game console. Do you get my point? Like, it's crazy. I mean, here's, here's just some random pictures. Look, this is Logan, he'll be here tomorrow. That's my wife Heidi right there in the, in the red trying to hide from the camera. Hashtag Heidi, hi Heidi. Um, just some more, just random pictures from the night. You know, not everybody was watching Fortnite, but they were, they were there, you know, they were there. And that's the purpose of this, socialization. Does that make sense? Learning by watching, not learning because I have to get up and go, my speech is, no. Just being around it is how you learn. And it doesn't stop there. Daniel Quinones, uh, that's Alex Kennedy, by the way. Uh, I put him in here on purpose, because Alex needs a shout out for the website. Um, Alex is a senior, he's graduate. And then, it, and then it transforms into this. We bowling, at our school we have a mentor time, so we hook up a, a bracket of we bowling. Duos we bowling during our mentor. It took us like, what did it take us, like a month? To get through, this, to get through the whole yeah, gaming? But in the end, you had the best we bowlers in the district, right? Hold on. So this is what happens, I wanna, I wanna see if I can play this for you. Sound working? Nope. Uh, yeah, it's, it is, pause, oh, let's try that. It was not all the way in, I'm sorry. So I was standing in line at Lowe's during the holidays checking out and I was listening to two ladies complaining about how antisocial their kids were gonna be once they get their new presents and they're all video game oriented. So I figured I'd throw together a clip and show you exactly how social video games today are. As opposed to the I thought of that as I was walking up. So uh, happy holidays and uh, enjoy the next 20 seconds and I dare you to tell oh, that me that was awful. Sorry guys. So this is a clip, Zai Wee Bowling. 
So that's that's her tenth frame. She doesn't even know she gets another one. I just got a strike. I go, Zai, you got one more. She's like, no, no, I don't. Look who's in the room is what I'm saying. It's every color, every kid, every kind of kid in my building is in there, this room There are people who weren't even involved in the video game club who just came to watch because they just wanted to see something like they that. They heard, yeah, they heard Wii Bowling. They heard the noise. And they're like, you got Wii Bowling going on? That's how it happens. Like, it's so dumb. And the reason we give out Wiis is because Wii is rated G. Schools can't fight a oh, Nintendo Wii. They can fight an Xbox, they can fight a PlayStation, but a Nintendo Wii, you approach a Nintendo Wii or a Dungeons and Dragons board game, they can't fight those. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it is what it is. So then it, it goes into this one. We go paintballing. Like, paintballing. And I'm proud to say Riley Deal, this is me versus Riley Deal. Okay, notice where I shot Riley Deal? We did like the old school, you know, 1812 kind of back to back thing like this. And I turned around on step two and we were supposed to go 10 and I just waited like this on him. And then they started yelling, he's going, he's going, Blake, were you, were you there, Blake? You guys were there. Oh, yeah, he's going. And all of a sudden he it registered, wait, he's cheating. And he took off running. So I started shooting him. Um, it is what it is, but I was happy. Again, relationship with teachers. Gene Striegel said to me, and I'm almost done with my stuff. This is, oh, by the way, this is for embarrassment's sake. Uh, some of these guys, it's our very first eSports win because kids want to do eSports, right? Watch this. This is such a cute little video. Look at All right, guys, they're taking a forfeit. Hey, they got a forfeit. Hey. <laughs> forfeit. Hashtag forfeits count. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Forfeits count. Look at how cute they are. Shane, where are you, Shane, with no hair? Jeremy, look at them. There's a bunch of bums it. up here. Um, but then we go to this one. Kids are like, dude, I want to go to play Smash. I didn't even know this existed if it weren't for some kids. That's where I saw you, right? I didn't even know this existed like a thing. And we dro I drove them in my van to Millersville. They paid for everything. And I was like, cool, I'm here. My son went with me because he wants to do it. Fine. Whatever. And that's what, that's what happens. Now it's what kids want. Um, and then finally, you get this one. Sam teaching Minecraft. Shout out to Sam. This is, this is uh, Jaden. He's in second grade. This is that moment I was talking about, about giving back to some kids. Um, you know, my son Cadman and his best friend Rowan, they participated in it. Uh, we green screened them out. It's a super low budget green screen approach. But you know what? The kids went home with a good memory and they came back the next year. In the spring, we're doing winter Wii Bowling uh, Olympics is what we're doing. The Wii Bowling Olympics. So like, come learn to ski and <laughs> come learn to fence, come learn whatever it is. So it's five days and you compete for a trophy. Just randomness, right? And then here's the truth of it all. That I am, I'm going to show you my favorite story. Then I'm going to shut up and let them do it. Question and answer if you want. The truth is games connect people, right? In a neutral setting, allowing students uh, to see each other beyond what society demands. That's what it is. Truth. So games connect people, period. Grandmas, grandpas, whatever. And the proof of this is my favorite story of all time. I took this kid and a bunch of them to go bowl with old people at our retirement home. So we went bowling with old people. You guys remember, you remember that, right? And so on the right over, they were thinking, oh, we're gonna smash these guys and we bowling. We're we bowling with old people. We're gonna smash these old people. They don't know what they're doing. They're old. That's literally what they're saying. And I'm like, these kids, whatever. Come on in if you wanna come in. I got Starburst. Why does everybody run away when I say that? They all look at me, they're like, mmm, they called out. They want Skittles, they want Skittles, YouTube. All right, so, so we go and we sit in an old folks home retirement. All we were promised was pizza. That's all we were promised from this, right? Pizza was amazing, I gotta say. Spirit Trust Lutheran Retirement Community. We end up playing. So on the ride over, my kids are all talking trash about how awesome they're going to destroy these kids. Well, when they rolled in, they had every, the nicest grandma and grandpas you could ever want to meet. We're there and they're all like hugging you. Oh, we're so happy for coming. You're such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. Oh, you're so, so, it's so nice to see people. You know, the grandma hadn't seen anybody in a long time. And then we show up and sure enough, my kids were like, we are going to destroy these people. No, the greatest generation showed up and curb stomped my kids by like 200 points. I mean, it was Sam embarrassment, embarrassment level Sam, yes. I'm, this, <laughs> I'm so happy they're here to be embarrassed by this. Um, and this is what we did, we showed up I and mean, we lost by almost 200 points to these people and they were so gracious. But the funniest part of the whole story is, is that 
Grandpa John is talking so much trash at these kids, but he was so passively aggressive, it, was, it, was, it wasn't even funny. I'm dying, they didn't even know they were being insulted. The one kid, Grandpa John looks at the one kid and goes, it's okay, buddy, that's why they gave you 10 frames, and he all pats him on the back. And then I'm, I'm over here laughing like, oh my God, he's running his mouth at this kid. And he didn't know what to do, because it's like, do I talk trash back to Grandpa or not? Like, I don't know, like, what do I do? And then, and then my over my favorite one was like, he was like, uh, he looked at this one kid and was like, it's okay, you, you know, that's why they give you a second try or whatever, you know, it's okay, you got that spare, it's all right. And he was all running his mouth about picking up a spare. I'm like, dude, I gotta teach these kids how to talk trash to old people. Like, I guess put that on my radar, but that's, that's where it is, and this is us. This is my video game club at Career Magnet School. His video game club is a different point. On their very first day at Cassius, they did one morning announcement, right? And it was, what, like 120 kids showed up. Something like, a one morning announcement, hey, you wanna do eSports? I think that was the extent of it. Come here. And then I show up, I'm like, oh my God. It filled up this whole room, like, of kids. And I was like, that's a lot of kids. And I didn't even know you yet. I'm like, who's gonna lead this? He's at football. And then I meet her, and next thing you know, it's like, yeah, she's a good one. And then they're now self-sufficient, you know? Um, and that's what it is. But here's, here, in the end of it, this is my last point to you. Start a club today because a kid in the corner could use it. And that's it. This is me and my boy at the Easter egg roll down in D.C. Um, it is what it is. And a kid like my kid could benefit from this. He's quiet, he's not a jerk, but he's definitely over in the corner by himself. Does that make sense? And that's the end of me, my part of this. I wanna open it up to these guys. If you have any questions real quick, I know you want some Starbursts. I've been advertising it. Can we hook them all up with another Starburst? Yeah, who's got the Starburst? Who's got the Starburst? Let's, let's do a little Starburst hack. Come on, walk around here, yeah. all right. Um, you can pick your cars, all right. Uh, you guys have any questions? Any questions so far, or do you just want me to go to these guys? Like, we have no idea what we're doing, honestly, up here. I, this is just the show. All right, so we'll go to, what I asked these guys to do is I basically said, hey, can you just tell them a story, your favorite moment? And I did not get to the cash as kids time, so I don't know if it's fair, if you have one, cool. Uh, but these guys specifically are asked, if you have, like, can you explain it? So, Kevin, you wanna start it up, or what do you wanna do? Yeah, sure. All right, sure. Kevin, it's all you. Um, do you need this mic for YouTube, or is it any mic? All right, cool. Uh, yeah, so my s sort of favorite memory um, from being in the VGC, uh, we have the overnighters uh, every single year, and one year uh, we were playing dodgeball. I don't know if we still do, but uh, it's dodgeball at 3 a.m., and we had just gotten done with a round, and I look up from, from whatever I was doing, and like it was literally 30 seconds after the round and somebody must have had a ball and just chucked it at the last second because I look up and I get slammed in the face and that was the first time I had ever had an injury-based uh, bloody nose. Um, but I, I guess you could also say that my other favorite memory uh, would be right now. Uh, this is this is something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to go to MAGFest and be on a panel and uh, I introduced these guys to MAGFest. Um, so I'm a MAGFest veteran. I've been here for f like four or five years now. Um, and we were here last year, but we didn't do a panel. And this year we ramped it up a notch and uh, started doing this. So um, this is going to go down as my favorite moment in the VGC. Yeah, probably, yeah. All right, so uh, my name is Jeremy, and this is... Shane. Uh, our, our favorite moment was a shared one. We have uh, an all-nighter, and that's always probably where most of these favorite memories are gonna come from, because it's essentially we stay after school and then don't go home till Saturday at eight in the morning when everyone's like dead tired and just laughing at everything because of lack of sleep. So uh, we have an initiation in the spring, and this includes reciting the... the, the the, the, what's it called? The Creed? The, the Wreck-It Ralph Creed from Batman. Yeah, the Batman Wreck-It Ralph Creed yeah. thing about like being villains and stuff. And uh, we, had a f we had to do interpretive dance to uh, Trap Mario music, followed by a uh, very intense game of Duck Duck Goose. And I think, well, was, I think this one's my favorite anyway. It was uh, Angry Complimenting, 
where we essentially just stood on a chair, called on people on the crowd, and be like, hey, Nathan, I really love your shirt, man. Like, it really brings out the color in your eyes. And just, like, we'd yell at uh, compliments at each other. And I just think that, like, you know, really made us bond like brothers. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was the one who had to, like, choose these two to essentially be, like, the Do you runner, that? runners up for uh, leaders mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I was initiated in by my brother and his friends, um, but this upcoming spring, I'm also going to have an. Uh, I'm also going to initiate someone else to take my place. So. It is. Yeah, like if, if there were, if there were like security right, cameras. I'll set, I'll set the environment. I'll set up the environment. It's like 2.37 in the morning, because we got 1.24 in the morning. I'm sorry. It was a, that was too weird of a number, 2.37. It's like 1.24 in the morning. Everyone puts on something that can like cover their heads so it looks robe-esque. So most Hoodies people just or, use a blanket. Yeah, whatever. And then uh, we put on a mask while we're trying to get a mask. And then we had like, we all sat in a circle. And then the rest of the club surrounded us. So it looked even more cold. I think we had the <laughs> lights turned off. <laughs> yeah, like CCTV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if the school didn't know we were having an all-nighter that night and they just like turned on the CCTVs and just rewatched it, they'd just be probably like really confused as to why a bunch of kids were in robes. Well, I had, I, I had a friend who came um, in from Cash's, and that was before we really had the Cash's VGC. Um, and he was there for the first time and we were doing the initiation and he was like, what is this? Like, is this what your school is? And we're just like, oh, we're, you know, this is just something stupid yes. that we do every year. But yes. Uh, yeah, uh, me and Cam have been talking too much. I'm sorry, Shane, if you wanna, wanna take over. Okay. Uh, yeah, with the uh, aggressive complimenting, that, that was probably pretty fun for me too because we like stood on chairs and it, it was more aggressive than it it would have been better to see in person, but it was it was pretty fun. And I also just enjoyed hanging out with people who share the same game so that I can hang out. Yeah, and league. I got introduced to league. And uh let's just say I'm addicted to it now. Yeah, are you both on the league team? Yes. Uh, the worst uh, bound put us on the team because he thought we were good. I think uh, that's it. <laughs> we're subs. Uh, we're substitutes. I had to play for two of the games and I caused my team to lose. Good uh, one. Hashtag Jana main. I love you, Andrew. <laughs> Brian, you first. <laughs> well. The, the Wii Sports thing that Bound was talking about, that was a lot of fun, but hands down, my favorite moment of all time was whenever we went to Gettysburg. <laughs> a lot of people, I'm pretty sure, forgot about this. <laughs> all right, so basically, we had the spur of the moment decision to go to Gettysburg for solely Pokemon Go. Solely Pokemon Go. <laughs> well, it was it was kind of hectic at first, just like getting there and everything. But it's it's mainly my favorite moment because that's kind of whenever I started to feel like I fit into the school. Because prior to going into ninth grade, I went to a private school, and it was it just felt like a really really awkward and just weird transition to go from a full middle school classroom that goes from 7th and 8th grade to having at least 300 people in the freshman class, which kind of scared me, honestly. But there was a person there, and we kind of clicked, and from that moment on, we've kind of just always hung out, talked to each other. So it was... No, still haven't. We're still we're still going strong. <laughs> Chase Rodkey. Oh, there you go. Chase Rodkey. Hashtag Chase Rodkey. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's cool. Uh, so I guess for me, I'm an advisor in the club, like Ben was saying, like just needed someone else to help run this thing when it first started. So I'm not a teacher, I'm actually in the IT department. And for me, like my job is not, like I would not interact with any of the children in most cases. So like it gives me something where like I get to see all them and like get to know them, which is really cool. And like, I just never would have thought of that when I first started this job, just like how much fun it could be to work somewhere and like get to do all this cool stuff instead of just boringly fix computers all day. I think I've talked too much if you guys want to talk about Shane, it. Shane, do you want? So Wednesdays, uh, on Wednesdays after school, they, uh, they decided Wednesdays we're going to hang out with the boys. So every Wednesday there's a Smash, they play Smash Brothers, the old time ones that just came out, so they can put it up to the team and there's like 12 of them. The league team can come over sometimes and meet, this is where they originally met each other was uh, they would hang out at, at CMS and play League, but then they realized that our computers aren't that good, so they went home and started playing, and then they went and got Vietnamese food without me once. Uh, 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 Just throwing that out there, Andrew Chen, that I was not invited to Vietnamese food. That was the spur, of the, spur yeah, of the moment. Whatever, you know, right, we were selectively left off the list. So, point is, is that every Wednesday after school we have the worst smell comes out of oh the, the computer lab right, I want to cut you from off these kids that just play games and they shut the door and they don't smell it. They've gotten nose deaf. But pro wrestling is getting played, Smash is getting played, games on the, uh, the computer is getting played. It's just a place to be. So we do that every Wednesday. And I mean, it's sometimes it's not even monitored. They, they self regulate themselves. Everything is. You know, the custodian is technically the the person in charge <laughs> some days. I'm like, Carol, you're good with them? Yes, I'm good with them. All right, cool. I'll be back like 20 minutes ago to get my kids. And that's it. Because they want to be there as opposed to I have to friggin' be here. Does that make sense? I mean, you all know preaching in the choir. So Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to quickly shout out to the teachers and staff of CMS for making stuff like this possible and just you know, going along with uh, all the crazy ideas that we have and um, supporting us uh, all the way through, whether it's VGC or any other club or anything like that, um, they're always super helpful, so. Yeah, I mean, other than that, that's what we got for you. How do we end? Are we supposed to, oh, you got Any other ending. questions? Club ending, you got club ending. Well, yeah, any other questions <laughs> first from anybody in the small audience? Yeah. This is the largest audience we've ever had. <laughs> I mean, hey, we're just, this is our first panel ever, so this, just having you guys is really yeah. great. <laughs> Thank you to my Patreons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, All right, is it time? Is, uh, yeah, we usually, Wait. Uh, questions. I got a question. The question. Oh. Oh. Now you're important, see? <laughs> power, one. The power, yeah. okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, how long did you say the club has been going for? We are in our, the Kerr Magnet School version is in its sixth year, I believe? Uh, yes. like fifth, fifth or sixth. Yeah, fifth or sixth, sixth years. Because I'm year seven of the building. Okay. Yeah, we started uh, yeah, I didn't know. So yeah, it's, it's, like four, it's like five and a half, technically. Okay. Is what it is ours. Ours is the most advanced, because we've been doing longest. These guys, yeah, Max here, is, they're literally in. Can I tell you about mine? Yeah, go for it. I'll, so. You just gave a crazy Italian a microphone. I just want you to know that this could go for a long time. So I'm Max, and I teach at the high school. So Bound is at the magnet school. I'm at the high school. And like you said, I coach football. So a little backstory on me. My son was part of the Minecraft camp. My son is also kind of on the spectrum. And when I say kind of, I mean he really is. So when Josh started talking to the parents, he started telling us all about these intricacies that his son had and he never came out and said the word but like like I got it I knew it so before they started playing I went up and talked to him and we kind of discussed you know how our kids mm -hmm. drive us nuts sometimes so I think through that he kind of understood that you know I'm kind of the same way I want my son to have some cool stuff and he had asked me if I was interested in starting a club at the high school and my first trepidation was dude how do I do this because I, I'm the kind of person who needs stuff outlined. What are we doing? When are we doing it? What time? Like, I'm, I'm structured like that. My dad was in the military, and I also played football. If we start at 4, that means you better be ready at 3.30. You know, so I needed some kind of outline. And he was awesome about what it took to start. 
So the week before he shows up with 120 kids, I don't even know how there was an announcement, but there was 170 kids outside my classroom. And there was just a line of kids coming in to sign up as an interest group. And he had given me this sheet of paper. He said, here, have them sign their name. Yeah, that was smart. Because one thing about you guys is your handwriting is terrible. So I, I take a picture. I'm like, dude, I don't even know how to put this on a Google sheet. But I mean, now through experience, I understand the next wave of registration next year will go so much easier. And like you said, the experience of doing it is really simple because the kids will eventually take over. So the first three months of the club, Sam was awesome. I was coaching football. And then afterwards, you know, she'll come to me and say, can we do this? Can we do that? And just like Bound, your first instinct should be yes and how. And there's been a couple events where you guys have gone up to the Magnet School and had fun. We've done stuff during school. Whenever we have like a dis early dismissal, she said, can we come into your room and play? Yes. Because these kids, they, I know they need a place and I'm, I'm happy to be part of it. But like for me, like I wanted to say, it's it's outlined for you, so you can do it. If I can do it, as a football coach, and well, I try to be like a, an uppity teacher, like my stuff is important, you should learn it. <laughs> if I can do it, you guys can do it, out in the YouTube world, get in touch with him. Because this, the first meeting we had, when we had the Wii and the, the kids are playing Smash Brothers, I just stepped back and I thought, this is the most beautiful stinking thing I've ever seen, ever. And I've only been teaching for seven years, so it's, it's nice for me to be able to follow that outline, follow that path. In my high school, we have something called Minithon. Anybody who knows anything about Penn State, they have this giant dance thing for like 48 hours called Thon. They raise money for pediatric cancer, the Hershey Medical Center, that all the money goes there. They make millions of dollars, it's great. At my high school, we have something called Minithon where we dance for 12 hours or whatever. So we're gonna hold another, so we talked about the Fortnite tournament for Mrs. Stockslager, we're gonna do another Fortnite tournament now for a mini-thon. Our hope is to raise hundreds of dollars just by people playing games, right? My, my end goal is people make friends, but like Bound says, if you can make yourself legitimate, we're just not a bunch of jabronis playing games in the corner, eating Doritos, right? So that's, obviously, I mean. <laughs> We're in the homecoming parade. I want, if you get on our website, you'll see a picture of it. There's a, it's a picture of our float. There's a picture of our float, which is literally, a, it was an 18-wheeler this year, the biggest, manliest 18-wheeling flatbed thing you could imagine. And it was, there was one kid dressed like a di giant dinosaur in the back. And there was, there was a, the front of it had, uh, what game were you playing? Rock we band. were playing Rock Band. They yeah. were playing Rock Band at the front. We play video games at the Homecoming Float Parade, like on the f yeah, on the actual. It route. originally started out as just a like <laughs> a, like a little trailer, whatever that you could hook up to like a pickup truck, and like four kids in the back with it's playing <laughs> Mario Kart, and then it grew into something even better than that. But it's I mean it's still just whatever we want it to be. Yeah, it's and again uh, again we got to wrap this up. I know the next people are coming in. Don't be afraid, is what I'm saying. If you guys could leave here with just an inkling of what we've thrown out, and I know you're the choir and I'm preaching to you, if you know of a teacher that you think would possibly even fathom the idea, I'll sell them on it in one, just make one announcement and see who shows up. That's all I need you to do. One announcement and 85 kids will roll in. You play, what, what are you doing? What kind of game? And next thing you know, it's, and that's what Video Game Clubs of America is trying to establish, our goal is, our primary mission, a video game club in every middle school and high school in the country. I want you to think about how massive that is. It's a lot of work, but it's probably gonna be the most valid thing I've ever done, and I've been teaching for 20 years. Like, I've had state championships, I've won recognition, but this is by far the thing that raises the hair on my arms, like every time I talk about it. So if you could, that'd be great. If you could take some stickers, like I said, toll booths on your way back are great. Unless you're easy pass, don't stop there and tag the easy pass, that's bad, you'll get hit. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, but if you could, thank you for coming. Anybody else wanna say anything? Are you done? We're out of time, basically. We did an hour.
Yeah. Starburst, get some Starburst and stickers. All right, thank you very much for coming. Woo! Woo. Yay! There, look at the crowd. There, the crowd goes thank wild. Thank you. I love See you that YouTube? YouTube? The crowd.